Yeah. <laughs> you dig your arms. <laughs> you dog and I'll go. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's just funny. Okay, okay, I'm sorry. I'm going to stop. Okay, I'm going to stop giggling. I'm going to stop giggling. Okay. Hey guys, it's Amanda here, your cutie of Carnage. And I'm Jess Grish. Here on another episode on Channel Sundown. <laughs> Today's episode, we actually just got back from seeing... Was it Child's, child's Play? Child's Play! <laughs> yes, we saw Child's Play, Jesse. 2019 Remake. Directed by Lars Kledberg. I hope I'm saying his name right. Good old-fashioned American name there. Right? This remake stars Aubrey Plaza, Gabriel Bateman. It's really funny about this actor because I actually thought he was actually the son of Jason Bateman. <laughs> Would have been a lot cooler if he was. <laughs> The illegitimate son of Jason Bateman. So, a lot of people are probably very aware of the story of the original Child's Play. The good old Chucky the Killer Doll. Well, this remake is a little different. We're not going to get into spoilers. We decided we're actually going to do two separate videos. We're going to do our review, non-spoiler, and then we're going to have a spoiler discussion. Because believe me, I have a lot to say. Spoiler talk! Yes. Right now we're going to stay in the shallow end, but then we're going to go in the deep side of the pool in the other episode and get really into the story. <laughs> it doesn't help. I don't know how to swim very well. So. I told you my story about Boy Scouts. We're going to save that for another time. Yeah. <laughs> another episode. Jesse and his Boy Scouts. Cut. <laughs> well, if you guys do know, of course, the 1988 film... I take the story a little differently because other than a killer coming back using magic as a killer doll, it is basically a malfunctioned toy that just kind of is like just not right computer wise, I guess <laughs> that's the way to put it. So they basically went and they took Chucky premise and they made it kind of like a killer toy. So this is just a killer doll it's a killer toy that's miss uh what's that word it's glitched glitched there you go that's the word i'm looking for Chucky's, with a glitch he's got a glitch basically a young boy he gets a toy from his mother and it kind of goes from there but the story i thought was really in the remake was really kind of original i like how they took the premise of chucky per se and they kind of changed it and I like that because honestly when I heard their remake in Child's Play I was kind of on edge because I was like how many I'm sorry guys but like you were pointing out in the movie theater I was like yeah Annabelle comes out today and he's like wait Chucky Annabelle and Toy Story <laughs> he goes there's just a toy a toy thing going on so, the summer of the talking toys is what I like a, the story kind of changed and kind of flipped everything. If you would have had the same premise of the original now, I don't think it would have served as current as it does now in the story with the toy glitches. Because we live, we live nowadays, everything is programmed, everything is digital, everything's on the internet. So, just a killer toy coming back, we have enough movies of those. So I like how they kind of switched it and everything. It's very Black Mirror-esque, threat of modern technology, if you will. Yes. I really enjoyed the fact that it was switched and modernized into kind of like the new kind of decade of kids. Because the thing about the story, like I said, I'm not going to spoil it, but I like how they make the kids our kids, but it's more of this time. Like, because kids like playing and stuff, but kids are very digital. They're really into the internet, they're really into computers, they're really into smartphones. And so, it kind of takes that kind of innocence, but kind of flips it in a way to where it's very jeopardizing to the kids for being so comfortable, yet, you know, kind of having this thing that just 
Uh, anyways, that's why we're having a spoiler video because I have a lot to say without uh, spoiling anything. <laughs> My pros, honestly, I would have to say is that, and the cons would have to go more into spoiler territory. Um, I had a few cons with the story being that um, I feel a lot of it was very slow and a point of kind of too slow in the beginning. I was at points where I was I was into the story and I really was like okay all right and that takes a lot so that's another pro I say is because I honestly didn't think I was gonna be that interested I honestly didn't I thought I was gonna be over it being like a killer doll whatever but I was really grabbed into the story I was really into it and I was like oh okay but there are parts where I kind of was like okay let's go <laughs> you know so it was kind of like, eh, it was very, when it was there, it was there, but when it was slow, I was like, eh, come on, <laughs> like, get there. And my pros for the movie were that it had a lot of dark humor that I really enjoyed. Yes. It was, no pun intended, but it was very playful, the movie was. I thought it was a fun movie. I had no expectations for this movie. Honestly, I didn't even really want to see it. Mm -hmm. I mean, because... That goes into my uh, my cons is like oh my god do we you know from the beginning when I first heard about it, I was like do we really need another child's play movie mm -hmm. do we need another reboot of something con is that it's you know it is another reboot or a retelling of the story but they actually did it in a fun modern way mm -hmm. that I enjoyed and I got I have to give them credit for that but I will say something about what I, I don't know if it's a, that I disagree with you about this. But you were talking about in parts that the story is slow, and I think the reason that you that it was slow is because they're telling a new origin story of Chucky, and you don't you know you haven't seen that in a while, and it's kind of like the same thing with the Marvel movies when they have a new hero and you've got to see like the origin again, or like you know you're like oh god Spider Man's origin again, but it I think that to me uh, it was needed to be done, and I enjoyed the storytelling and the, like, the telling of his origin, and that way they're setting it up for, you know, possibly more movies down the line, and that way they don't have to tell this, you know, this Chucky's origin story again. Okay, don't hate me, because I'm going to say this once, and it's on camera, but you're actually really correct, because now I think about it, I'm doing exactly what I was like, everyone's going to do this, everyone's going to be like, oh, it's not Chucky enough, it's not like Child's Play, it's not... Honestly, guys, this is a remake, but I really don't really consider it a remake yeah. as much. Like, they have, of course, uh, they have Andy and they have Chucky and everything, but I feel like it's its own story. So they're not, like, retelling a story, they're revamping. So it's what a reboot, I think, genuinely needs to be. Yeah. It needs to be. Like, a lot of reboots, I believe, should tell... A story but kind of take his story and change it sort of not so much change it but do a different look yeah. on it like kind of switch something about it so you are correct when you say that the parts where I'm, I'm kind of bitching about when I say it's too slow are the same things I bitch about everyone bitching about the movie yeah. <laughs> so okay so that makes sense so the parts genuinely weren't slow but in my head I was like come on come on I was right. expecting I was expecting child's play it's not. Right. Well, I think that they did it in a way that you can still appreciate the, mm -hmm. the old Child's Play movies for something they are because they stand alone from this. Yes. They, there's really no connection, I mean, other than the nods to the, mm -hmm. you know, the same character names or whatever. But I think that they, I think it was really smart that the way they did it because it's not, it's not ruining the old franchise where I don't mm -hmm. think they're going to have to go back and like, you know, five years from now there's going to be another Child's Play movie with the mm -hmm. original Chucky because yeah. they're like, oh, well, that didn't work. Let's go back to the other way. And mm -hmm. this takes place after the second original yes. child's play movie because that's where everything starts getting you know convoluted and mixed mixed up with remakes now is mm -hmm. they're like oh well that remake didn't work let's go back to the original and then it's just like okay just yeah. stop just quit yeah. don't make any more movies just that's stop true. but i think that this i think this will play out as a pretty good franchise on its own and i think that original child's play fans will enjoy this movie but they'll still be able to go back and watch the old child's play movies and enjoy those as well you're correct i agree too Okay, our next point is the acting. You guys know that it stars the mother, who is played by Aubrey Plaza. And then you have the little boy, Gabriel Bateman, not Jason Bateman's son. Then we have the detective, played by Brian Tyree Henry. And then, of course, we have Chucky, 
played by, voiced by, Mark Hamill. Not familiar. Oh, right. <laughs> well, the thing about it, and I'm going to get on that real quick before I jump into the cast, is I heard a lot of people that were like, oh, Mark Hamill, he's going to be the new Chucky. Oh, they should have got the original. I'm like, do you guys not realize that he was, he's the Joker? Oh, yeah. And he's done so many. A lot of, yeah. a lot of voiceover work. Exactly. And I'm sorry, but he is fantastic as a voice of Chucky. I'm sorry. As a way of just doing that voice. And there's points in the movie, I'm not going to say exactly the points, that you sympathize. Like, he has a way of, like, doing that with the voice. And it just was really good. And I was really, really impressed with it. But then again, you know, I like him as a Joker, too, so. I didn't know a lot about this movie, so I didn't even know Mark Campbell was doing the voice. <laughs> But like you said, he's he's mainly known at this point in his career for doing uh, cartoon work and voiceovers, and like and you you nailed it. He did a really good job of like portraying a lot of emotion because that's mm -hmm. hard to do when you're just you know sitting in a sound booth and recording you mm -hmm. know a voice. But I think that he's gotten to a point in his career where he's gotten really good at it. Like oh, yeah. you said, he was really good at conveying emotion and. Lots of different, lots of different emotions. Yeah, because I didn't think you could sympathize with the killer toy. <laughs> but there was parts where you kind of were like, oh, Chucky. Oh, yeah. Like, really, you're like, oh, Chucky. And he, then... just, he just wants to be your friend. Right? <laughs> Till the end. <laughs> so, positives from Mark Hamill. And now we're going to jump into my point for the acting. The mother, played by Aubrey Plaza. Now. I have a few uh, things to say about this. Before I get into my my get on my soapbox, y'all just wait for me a minute. I love Aubrey Plaza. She's awesome. She's fantastic. She's funny. She has a dark sense of humor. That being said, I really was actually kind of disappointed. The two two kind of way thing because I was hoping that Aubrey Plaza wasn't going to be a full Aubrey Plaza character. And be funny and stuff through the film. Because of course you want to sympathize for the mother and everything. But at the same point. I feel like she held a lot back. I didn't feel like she was fully there. As a kind of character. She was kind of just. You know. Put kind of to like the corner. And she didn't really have much reactions. And, as I would have expected. And so I. She wasn't bad. But I was kind of like. Huh. Okay. I would agree with you on that. I also love Aubrey Plaza like a lot. And, <laughs> I know you do. Uh, matter of fact, that was one of the major draws for this movie for me was like the fact that she was in it. But that was what made you go yeah, see it because uh, I was like Aubrey. You're like Aubrey Plaza. Okay, let's go see it. And I was like, all right. And, and she is she is capable of really good acting. I, have you seen Ingrid Goes West? Yes. And there's a. Um, uh, Little Hours, I think, is another one that she's in that's really good. So she's she's done some really good acting in movies. And it's not that the acting is just isn't bad, but it's mm -hmm. almost, it is almost a little too typical Aubrey Plaza. Mm -hmm. It's somewhere, I would say it's somewhere in between uh, Parks and Recreation and Ingrid Goes West. Where she yeah. just got, like you said, it's just kind of in the middle of the road, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Where it's not, you know, I mean, she's probably not going to win any awards for it. But yeah. at the same time, I wasn't booing her off the screen. Yeah. Either. It's one of those things that, like, Aubrey Plaza was giving a character you could, could kind of give to every anybody. So it was like, it's kind of like, oh, Quentin Tarantino, direct the new Twilight. You're like, but he's a good, he's a good director. Why does he need to do something like Twilight? Sorry for you fans of Twilight, but just saying. You diss Twilight a lot. <laughs> I do. I do too, though. <laughs> Wait till we start talking about the kid actors in this movie. <laughs> Speaking of kid actors, I really liked Gabriel Bateman. I thought he was really good. Uh, he was in uh, Lights Out, and he is really, like, I really liked him in this film because, like I said, he played a kid. Like, the kids in this film were very kid-like, but they were very believable. They weren't just kids that go around playing like, oh, mommy, daddy, what is that? No, they were, like, cussing and beating the hell out of each other and, and not going to get it, not going to spoil it, but they were, like, uh, they were, like, Oh, there's a killer doll? Okay, let's kill it. Yeah. Like, they weren't like, oh, no. They were like, let's, let's take care of this. And I was like, yes, because that's what kids do. Kids are badasses. <laughs> they want to save the situation. They want to be like, all right, well, everybody get a machete. Let's go. You know, and that's what kids are. So. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, no, those are kids are. Like, think about it. Like, 
I'm sorry, but let's like, get a machete. Yeah. Well, like think about like your your. Well, I mean, your kids are older now, but like your kids at the time, if you would have told Ryan and you're like, yeah, there's a killer dog, he wouldn't be like, oh, daddy, he'd be like, oh, let's kill it. Yeah. He would have been like, let's go. Like, and that's what was very believable with the cast and everything, and and the detective. Well, the the kids were kind of were from the streets. Yes. You know what I mean? Like they were yes. kind of street savvy, street mm-hmm. smart kids. You know? Exactly. They were right. like it was. I don't know what's. I guess it was. Was it supposed to be New York? Did they ever say what city they were in? It was a. It was, it was a larger urban yeah. city. You know. I think so, it was New York. So they're like playing out. Yeah. They're playing in the street with like graffiti behind yeah. them, and mm-hmm. you know, like hey, if you and this is for Tupac, and you yeah, know, like, <laughs> stuff like that. So yeah, they weren't just like the you know suburban kids. Exactly. I'm Tyree Henry. He was a detective, and I also liked him in the role because he played the detective, but at the same time, he was, like, comedy, but yet it was real. Like, it's hard to, like, describe without. I'm not going to get into detail, but he was funny, realistic, and was a real detective. He was, he had feelings, he had anger, he had, he was heroic, he did what he had to do, you know, and it was just very... Everybody is believable, and everybody, and I keep saying believable. I know I've been using that word a lot in this review, but you guys don't understand how many movies I've seen recently, and I'm like, nobody would do that. <laughs> like, nobody would do that. Like, ugh. Anyway, so it was very believable, and I really liked it. So, yeah, so that everybody was great. Uh, Aubrey Plus wasn't even bad. I'm going to re- rephrase that. She wasn't bad. She just wasn't the full potential I expected. I was very disappointed by the guy who played her boyfriend because I thought she could do a lot better than that guy. Right? That, I thought that too. He was not nearly attractive enough for her. Yeah, yeah. I thought that too when I was low and I was like, oh, oh, are we, are we going that level, Aubrey? And I don't know if I don't know if you know this or if you've seen the show Atlanta, but the guy that yeah. played the detective he's, 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 the, he's the star yeah. of Atlanta, which he's also yeah. with, it just proves he's a, he is a really good actor. He's able to convey a lot of different things in one character. Yes, and that's what I was going to, I'm glad you brought that up because I forgot to mention that. Y'all know that I love Elena. I love Elena. The show. And I love my Lanta. <laughs> yeah, like, you guys know why I love Elena, so we'll just. It's a good show, really good show. It's Donald Glover. Don't get it confused with Danny, guys. It's not Danny Glover, Donald Glover. <laughs> That's funny that you said that because you did that the other day. I was like, yeah, that's Danny, you know, that movie with uh, Donald Glover. And you're like, Donald Glover, the old guy? And I was like, what? And you're like, you no, know, Donald Glover, the guy you love? And you're like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's just a, I think everybody yeah. does that. Like, sometimes you hear it, for some reason, I think sometimes people just hear Donald yeah, Glover's name, Danny been, Glover. Yeah, because everybody's been calling him Charles Gambino. Like, they yeah. call him his actor name, too. They're like, oh, that's Charles Gambino. I'm like, no, I knew him before. He was Charles Gambino. But anyways, yeah, so the cast was great and everything, so there you go. And, you know, you know my thing about kid actors, and I will mm-hmm. say that at, at the beginning, I thought they were kind of annoying, especially mm-hmm. the guy named, was his name Pug? Or yeah. Something like that. Pug, when they, when they the first kid. introduced him, I was like, oh, God, this kid's annoying. Yeah. And I didn't even really like the girl. I didn't even like her that mm-hmm. much either. But by the yeah, end, yeah. I was like, okay, I like these kids, especially yeah. the girl. She ended up being oh, like yeah. she ended up being like one of my favorite characters yeah. in the movie. So. And you you guys will see like these kids start they start going and they they make it, and like and that was another thing too is that like there was not really any negatives with the acting like I said other than you know Aubrey not you know going for all Mark Hamill was great you know the kids were great so even the lady that played the uh, detective's mother. Yeah. Like at first I was yes. like, oh, what is this? And but then by the end I was like, oh, I really like, I like yeah, her character. Really... All the characters, all the characters grew on me. Mm-hmm. Well, not all the characters. There's one yeah. character that doesn't, or two characters that won't grow on anybody. But mm-hmm. our next point is, of course, the gore. This is Child's Place, Killer Doll. There's gore. I'm not really going to stay on this topic very long because, like I said, there's gore. There's blood. You can't really... There's not really a hit or miss because it is what it is. Honestly, to be totally upfront with you, I don't feel like there was enough for what it was because it's child's play film, so I expected it to be like boom, 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 mm-hmm. like gore, pay. but it had a lot of that, but... It didn't have an overabundance like I expected. So, I don't really have a feeling with the gore, positive or negative. I thought it was just the right amount. It was just good. It was good gore. So Good gore. Yeah. Good gore. Good gore. Go. <laughs> go check out my band, Good Gore, playing downtown next weekend. <laughs>
I'm kind of like you because it did get to a point where I was like, are, there, are they even are they going to kill anybody in this yeah. movie? But then once he once the killing starts going, it's like mm -hmm. they're really cool kills, you know, yeah. like they're really they're really oh, yeah. fun, you know. I think what people want from a horror movie, so I don't, you're not going to be disappointed. That's true because honestly, I think it was enough. But like, if it would have been like you know, it's flying everywhere, you would have been like, this is this. You don't have to do that, yeah. you know. <laughs> like it's it's good, but the kills were great. And, there, and yeah, and each I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. But each kill had like a little build up and a little tension yeah, to it. Exactly. And it was good. I, I don't know. They were entertaining. Each one yeah. of them had like oh some you know suspense. Yeah. You're like oh what's gonna happen? And they know it's yeah. gonna happen. And then the, the payoff. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, I will say there is one scene. That I was like literally like this. He's like, "Are you okay?" <laughs> I was like, and he was like, "Oh, wait, are you okay?" And I was like, "Oh man, I never close my eyes, ladies and gentlemen." But I was like, oh. "There, there was, there's one thing that I connected with the kills that they did. There was kind of like a running gag throughout the movie mm -hmm. that was so, so." It's such dark humor, but I loved yeah. it. Oh my, I yeah. love that. I love that they did that. Yeah, we're gonna get we'll into that talk, in the spoiler. We'll talk about the yeah. spoiler thing, but that yes. was it. Was so, that was? Funny. I know it's what you're talking about yeah. too, because that everybody in the theater started laughing. Like everybody thought it was hilarious. So yeah. So the gore. There you go. Go is in gore. You see what I did there? Go gore. Go gore. Yeah. Gore. Go. <laughs> I read. And watch sports, apparently. <laughs> it is the sound of visuals, guys. There's not really much to say about this, because honestly, it has gore, it has sound. There's really not much, really... It, it was what it was. It was just there. Everything was there. Everything, when it had to be bloody, it was bloody. And you saw it, like, it was there. So the sound of visuals were okay, but nothing to uh, write home about. And I will say that Ch uh, Chucky looked really good. Like, I don't know, I don't know if that was a combination of CGI and whatever, but like, it wasn't, it was. It didn't, you know, a lot of times when they do stuff like that, it takes me out of the movie because I'm just like, oh, that's so unbelievable. But I thought he was, you know, or, you, know you think he was believable? Um, I do full heartedly believe that the original Chucky looked a whole lot better than Chucky in the remake. I did not like Chucky in the remake. I did not like it. The look. So, yeah, I don't yeah, like. I, I don't like him. I didn't like his general appearance. His yeah. face. I didn't like his big head and stuff. Mm -hmm. But I mean, as far as like, he looked good as far as movement and mm -hmm. you know his actions in the movie. But yeah, yeah, I'm with you about. I still like the original um, Chucky look better. Mm -hmm. You know, because he was kind of something about him was just kind of awkward. But I think that was. Mm -hmm. I guess that's what they were going for. You know. Well, I do kind of think they were trying to modernize it, so they're trying to make it look like like toys that look like nowadays and I just I didn't I didn't feel it so all right now here it is our final verdict for child's play 2019 all right I'm going to go ahead and let mr. Jess Christ go first because I've done a lot of talking today and I want him to go ahead and take a break from hearing me talk because I've been talking all day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't have a whole lot to say about it, but I will give it the biggest compliment that I could possibly give it, and that is I really wanted to hate this movie. You know mm -hmm. I did. Yeah. I talked a lot of smack about it. I didn't want to go see it. You talked me into it. I had very low expectations for this movie. Did not want to see it, but I enjoyed it. Yeah, I actually enjoyed this movie, and I really... You know, it's really it's usually very hard for me to enjoy something that I'm not looking forward to or whatever, but I was very pleasantly surprised. I mean, it's not my favorite movie of all time. Uh, I typically don't like remakes and reboots, but I thought they did a really good job, and I think they made an entertaining movie. I <laughs> will dive more into what I think in the spoiler video, but I kind of feel the same way, sort of. I believe it was, okay, everyone's going to shoot me for this, but I thought that the, everything about it, like the whole sketch of it all, was like perfect remake. Perfect remake. Perfect reboot. Like, I say remake. It's what I just said. I don't mean re remake, reboot. I thought it was like the way it was just structured, they got it. 
That's what you're supposed to do when you revamp a video. And you're right. I always use my hands. Sorry, I've been talking today with my hands because you tell me your hands all. I was like, no, I don't. Now we have video evidence. <laughs> well, and you keep doing this for... <laughs> but anyways, it's, it's great. It's a perfect reboot of just taking something and kind of retelling it. That being said, I felt that it could have went more into a different, like I said, I get more during the spoiler review, but they could have got a lot more into the story with the more kind of, uh, how do I say this, mischievous, like, uh, way of things. Like, they could have made it a whole lot darker, I think. <laughs> Man, I have so much to say about spoilers. I don't want to spoil anything. But anyways, I'll just say the ending. Anyways. Appreciated the film. I thought it was good. But I don't know if I liked it as much as other people told me they liked it. Mind you, I have not watched any reviews or anything for this film. Because I never do until I see a film and I do my own review. Because I don't want to, like, take what other people... And when we go see the movie, we don't talk about it after the movie. We wait until our review. Because I don't want to have, like, other things in my head, people pointing at me, thinking about it. I kind of structure my own idea. I thought it was okay. I thought it had a good um, box it was in, and they were going the right direction. But it was lacking in a lot that I expected would be more. So, yeah. My opinion. I got many. So, guys, that is our review of... Child's Play on Channel Sundown. What do you guys think? Do you guys think it was great? Do you guys think it was awful? You guys let us know. Do you think we're a little too nice? Do you think we're too little picky on the film? Do not forget to like and subscribe. And, like I said, let us know. Comment below. Oh, see I'm rapping now too. Uh, I try. Don't try too hard. <laughs> Thanks again for watching. Stay tuned for our spoiler video. Alright guys. Till next time. Bye. You can't decide. <laughs>